coffee. Mm. Mm. Wow, it's so hot. Hi, I'm Andre Reese. I'm a photographer and videographer. And today I'd like to talk to you about three mistakes that I made when I started photography. But before I start, if you do like the video, please be sure to hit the like button below. And if you do have any questions, please leave a comment and I will get back to them as soon as I can. Now, I hope you enjoy the video. Let's do it. Number one, buying the wrong camera. Now, when you first get into photography like myself around 12 to 13 years ago, I wasn't sure what camera I wanted to buy, what were all the settings, the features, shutter speed, aperture, you know, I was unsure what I wanted. So I went into a shop, as many people do, and they asked the shop assistant, I'd like a camera, what camera do you recommend? Now they may just know Canon or Nikon, and at that time there wasn't really, uh, Sony wasn't really po uh, popular. So the guy just said, okay, yeah, we have Canon camera, the D400, which actually it's not a bad camera, but I had no clue with a kit lens. And I just said, okay, it fits my budget. And I trusted the shop assistant's word and I got the camera. Yeah, I got some great pictures from it, but at that time, I wish I would have researched and knew exactly what I wanted before spending around $800 on that camera with the kit lens. Um, I've, uh, the second mistake I'd made was I wanted to start making videos and I bought this uh, Sony Handycam. Now I'm not saying it's a bad camera, it's actually exceptional, especially in, <laughs> at the time. But I had no clue about videography. And again, this is around 10 years old and what I was doing. So I just went into the shop, yeah, as you do, I'd like to buy a video camera and the guy picked the top of the range in the store and it fit my budget and I said, okay, great. Let, let me see how it works. Yeah, the video quality looks amazing. Now, when I look back in hindsight to what I'm doing now, I need a camera that does 60 frames a second. Uh, now it does 4K, you know, so when you go into the shop back then, obviously the technology was different, but when you go into the shop today, make sure that you have some knowledge of exactly what you want to get from your camera. That being, like I said, I want 4K, 60 frames a second, or super slow motion. I also want it to take pictures as well. I want it to have eye autofocus. Just make sure that you know what you want so that you're not by purchasing the wrong product. And that way you're not wasting money. better. Oh, I always need a coffee in the mornings. That leads me to number two, buying low quality lens. And honestly, lens compared to your camera are going to last a hell of a lot longer. You can get a lens that will last, you know, 20, 30 years. So investing in high quality lens is something I highly recommend. And the mistake I made was purchasing low quality lens because I wasn't sure what aperture meant um, and uh, what 1.4 or 1.8 meant on the lens. I wasn't sure what 17 millimeter or, or 100 millimeter meant, meant. And when asking, I would like to do macro photography and I go into the shop, the shop says, oh yeah, this is a macro lens. And the shop assistant gave me a Sigma macro lens that, uh, you know, when, when I checked the reviews, one of the worst lens that you could buy. But me being naive, I just trust the shop assistants because at this time it was all around the same time of purchasing the camera where I was just excited because you get excited to get into it. Oh, I want to take amazing pictures, but then you end up purchasing the wrong equipment. Um, so some of the advice that I would give is buy lens that are for a full frame sensor, not cropped sensor, because if you have bought a crop sensor camera, which if you're not sure what those are, I will explain in another video, 
and you can even you can check online you can google crop sensor full frame but full frame is what you want to build up to and my recommendation would be invest in full frame lens that are high quality like what i have here i have a sigma 35 millimeter 1.8 lens amazing for portrait photography and a sony 70 to 200 2.8 lens one of the best lens I've, I've ever used and the best purchase I think I've ever made. Those will last forever, whereas your camera will get out of date. And now the, the final thing that I'll say about purchasing the lens, yes, they are expensive. And if you don't have a budget, you can buy other brands that, for example, with my Sony, I have a Sigma lens, I have Tamron lens and this one is uh, Samyang. You know, they're all very, you know, low budget lenses, apart from the Sony, which is very, very expensive, but they're all very high quality. So don't make the same mistakes I made. If you, if you can't afford to buy an expensive lens and, or one of the, the, the budget lens that's uh, for full frame, and you really have to buy a crop sensor. There are good crop sensor lens for uh, budget prices, but just make sure you research exactly what you want. If you wanna do portrait photography or landscape photography or wildlife photography, make sure you research and, and get what fits in your budget. Don't just go into a shop and ask because generally you're not gonna get exactly the, uh, the lens and the quality that you're most likely expecting. And then you're gonna come on photography groups like I did and say, why is the background not so blurry? Or why is it not as sharp as it should be? They say, yes, the photographer makes the pictures, but the camera and the lens, they do certainly help. And finally, on to number three, wasting a lot of money and it sort of is relevant to the other two points as well with purchasing the wrong camera and purchasing low quality lens. But photography and videography, there is so many products that you can buy from tripods, audio equipment, uh, your computer, mouse, keyboard, because obviously you need to edit the pictures and you need to edit the videos, audio equipment, stabilizers, uh, you name it. There is an unlimited amount of equipment that you could buy. Now, before going into the shop or before purchasing that equipment, you know, ask on Facebook groups, ask other photographers, uh, ask your friends, ask your family if they're into photography. Don't just go into a shop and assume the shop assistant knows what he's talking about or she's talking about. Preferably go to a camera specialist shop. Even look for a second hand if it's your first, uh, first camera but photography can be, it can empty your pockets. So be sure to research before purchasing that equipment. And if you do have any questions, my Instagram is linked below. It's Andre underscore Reese. You can send me a direct message. I'll be more than happy to answer any questions you have. Okay. Whew. Yeah, that's an embarrassing three mistakes, to be honest. I'm like the worst case scenario for wasting money on photography and videography. So uh, yeah, don't do what I did. Don't do what I did. Mm.